Hi, I'm Flux. In the first part of this video I've been boasting about my PC in a bag, with which I can even play Star Wars Battlefront 2 in a cafe. If you haven't seen that, you might want to check that out first. I'll put up a link in the top right corner. Now this is the second part of my build video. In the first part I have already installed a complete mini ITX PC into this leather bag. This part is about how I connected the monitor with a single cable to the bag, how I made the sleeve for the monitor and why I chose a different power supply in the end. Now I'll roll the intro, why don't you click on subscribe in the meantime. The complete PC is already mounted in the bag, however it will need a couple of holes for the fans. First I probed with my finger to find the middle of the processor fan and cut a small hole there. That's not getting me anywhere, I will have to get rid of the divider first. The computer goes back in and to prevent it from falling backwards I stuff it out with a piece of wood. Now I have carefully enlarged the hole so that the entire fan is exposed. I did the same with the fan of the graphics card and I also needed a smaller hole in front of the power supply. I designed covers for the fan holes and printed them with my 3D printer. As always, you will find the files on floxing.de. The cover in front of the power supply unit has a hook attached with which it is hooked into one of the ventilation slots. It is secured with a screw, which is also screwed into the ventilation slot. The covers in front of the fans shall be glued on with hot glue. So that I don't get any hot glue into the fans, I'll put a thick foil in between. The hot glue can easily be removed from the bags in which computer parts are delivered. Now it is time for the 13.3 inch touchscreen monitor which runs on 12 volts. It's a genuine Chinese brand product. Um, on the box it says Mage Dock, but on the screen it is spelled Mega Dock. Hmm. By the way, after a short time, an unattractive pattern has formed on my monitor. I suspect that the touch foil detaches from the actual monitor. Overall, the thing is stylish, but looks very fragile. The monitor works with HDMI. However, I would like to put it in the bag with the cables plugged in, but the plug is too long, so I carved it smaller. Now it fits. For the USB signal I slaughtered a braided smartphone charging cable, however the braiding was much harder to remove than I thought. I also reduced the size of the USB connector. And an antique charging cable is used for the 12 volt power supply. These three cables are pushed through a braided sleeve. I had cut off the USB plug to help push it through the sleeve, now it gets soldered back on, as well as the plug for the power supply. For the three connectors I designed a common housing and 3D printed it. First the underside is temporarily fixed with a little hot glue. 
Then the end of the braided sleeve is cut off smooth and the upper half of the housing is put on and fixed with adhesive tape. And now the cavities are filled with plenty of hot glue. And the multifunctional plug is ready. Now the monitor needs a sleeve. The color of this fabric matches the back quite well. I have drawn the outline onto the fabric and left a border of about 1 cm. This piece of MDF from a broken picture frame is used as reinforcement. I divided it into four segments of about the same size, but I planned the gap between the parts on the front a little bigger. With my already dead jigsaw blade, I cut the parts. Now I've covered the fabric with Patex. Patex glue should always be allowed to dry until it no longer feels moist before pressing the parts together. The edge is folded inwards and pressed down. Ah, uh, well, so that the edge in the corners does not become twice as thick, I have to cut off the corners diagonally first. Now the MDF parts are glued on. Patex should be pressed down briefly but firmly, so hit it with a hammer. Now I need a second copy of the fabric. I treat it exactly the same as the first one. Before I finally press on the fabric, I try it on again. And I realize I forgot to take the material thickness into account. The sleeve should have been one number larger. But it will work, so the parts are finally pressed together. I glue the monitor with hot glue to the upper half of the backside. This means that it can be removed later without leaving any residue. And now you can even use the sleeve as a monitor stand. In the computer I have installed a card reader, which is actually intended as an external device, but I connected it directly to the motherboard. As a power supply I had used a mains 212 volt power supply and a thing called M280X PSU, which generates all the different voltages that the computer needs from these 12 volts. That should deliver 160 watts, um, this was even enough for benchmarks and endurance tests. But if you want to play games, it's obviously not enough. In Star Wars Battlefront 2, the computer sometimes just rebooted, so I used this Pico ITX PSU instead. This is even much smaller and is plugged directly onto the motherboard, but it needs almost exactly 12 volts at the input and I better don't use the computer with the onboard power in the car now, which is usually 13 to 15 volts. But Battlefront 2 works fine now. So that's it for now. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments. This will definitely not be my last PC build and if you have any requests or ideas, you are also very welcome to write them in the comments. But next time I will do something completely different. So, see you then.